Hello guys, today we are going to talk about the erythroplakia. So this is the red patch in the oral cavity and it is also known as erythroplasia of Quirot because it was discovered by a scientist called Louis Quirot and if you are new in this channel, please like and subscribe, that would be highly appreciated. So here is the picture of uh, erythroplakia, you can see the red patch in the oral cavity. And in this video, we're going to discuss about the causes and clinical features as well as some treatments. So let's get started. Let's start with the definition. So it is a red patch or plague in the oral mucosa, which cannot be characterized clinically or pathologically as any other conditions and which has no apparent causes. So just like in leukoplagia, this is a red patch or plaque in the oral mucosa. So in leukoplakia there was a white patch while here we have red patch or plaque in the oral mucosa. And this cannot be characterized clinically or pathologically as any other condition. So if you see the clinical features and pathological features of erythroplakia, it doesn't really match with the other conditions. And it has no apparent causes. That means like the exact causes of erythroplakia is unknown. So this is 17 to 20 times more potential malignant than leukoplakia. So this erythroplakia, it is 20 times more likely to convert into malignant when you compare with leukoplakia. So let's see the etiology. Well, the exact etiology is unknown, but there are other some causes that may contribute to the erythroplakia. So these causes are similar with the leukoplakia. So the, the tobacco uses is the main causes. So if you if you are using tobacco in the form of cigarette or chewing tobacco, then th this decreases the oral health status. Also, alcohol does the same, and chronic irritation. If you have constant irritation, that decreases the oral health status. Also, candidiasis, which is a fungal infection caused by candida albicans. Also, systemic factors such as hormone deficiencies and dysfunctions and male and female hormone deficiency vitamin deficiency so if you have deficiency of such hormones it decreases the oral health status and bring more oral health problems also infections such as herpes simplex virus human papilloma virus and epstein bar virus infection they they decrease the oral health status and causes problem also drugs such as anti-metabolites and anticholinergic and conditions such as syphilis. Let's see the clinical features. So it usually occur at the fifth to seventh decade of life, that is 50 to 70 years, and it occur in both male and female. And sight, it mostly occur in the floor of the mouth, retromolar areas, buccal mucosa, retromolar areas are behind the third molar areas, and also in the gingiva, tongue, soft palate. And let's see the presentation. So the lesion is usually asymptomatic. So this lesion is usually not painful and no burning sensation. And size is 1.5 cm approx. So if you measure the size, it's usually 1.5 cm. And surface is smooth and regular. So if you see the surface of erythroplakia, as in here, it is soft and, I mean, smooth and regular surface. And it is non-elevated, flat or depressed red macule or patch on the oral surface with clear defined margins. So if we see here, it is flat or depressed. So this looks like flat or depressed. It is not raised and it has well defined margin. So this red patch or uh, this red patch or plaque, it, it has well defined margin. So you can see it is, its margins are clearly demarcated from its normal mucosa. Also here, the margins are sharply demarcated. And margins are sharply demarcated. So just like in the picture, its margins are clearly demarcated. Let's see the types of erythroplakia. So the first one is homogeneous erythroplakia. So this is bright red velvet soft area with irregular but well-defined margins. So the homogeneous, here's the picture of homogeneous. This is bright red in color and soft and it is all although it is irregular but the margins are clearly defined that is it is clearly distinguished from the normal mucosa and next one is erythroplakia so this is interposed with patches of leukoplakia 
that is number numerous erythromatous area with few white patches so this is the mixture of red patches and the white patches as you can see in the picture here so there is a red components as well as white patches so this is the erythroplakia and the next one is speckled erythroplakia so this is soft irregular raised erythromatous area with granular surface in the epithelium so here's the picture of speckled erythroplakia so you can see it is soft and its shape is irregular and it has red erythromatous area so the erythromatous area means red area also it has raised surface as you can see here there are raised surface and also it is it has gran granular surface that means the texture is quite grainy in texture as you can see some raised structure are present and it looks like some grains are present let's see the histopathology of erythroplakia so normally this erythroplakia is always associated with dysplasia so the cells undergoes dysplasia or it shows the feature of carcinoma in situ where the entire epithelium undergoes dysplasia or it also shows the feature of invasive squamous cell carcinoma so these are the features that are shown by the erythroplakia if we see histo histologically and the epithelium is frequently atrophic with lack of keratin production so if we see the epithelium its level is frequently decreased as it undergoes atrophy and also there is no keratin production the connective tissue showed chronic inflammation so here is the connective tissue and there is the infiltration of chronic inflammatory cells such as lymphocyte plasma cells now let's see the treatments of erythroplakia so removal of causative agents such as tobacco smoking drinking alcohol betel nuts as these are the agents that mainly contribute to the erythroplakia so obviously this habits needs to be stopped also maintaining dietary levels such as vitamin a vitamin b vitamin c vitamin e as these vitamins are essential for health health healthy of oral cavity so these levels should be maintained also excisional biopsy is done to remove it, it sur by surgically and deep and wide surgical excision of the lesion is can be also done and there needs to be regular follow-up until it is healed 